bring in our experts tonight. Michael Steele is a former RNC chair who supported uh, Joe Biden in the campaign and the New York Times, Michelle Goldberg. Uh, Michael, it doesn't feel like it's getting better right now. Your thoughts? It's not. And it's not for a very good reason. It's because the leadership of the party, along with certainly the, the president of the United States, continue to allow to fester out there this notion that this election was rigged, this idea that there were criminal acts, uh, you know, heaped upon Donald Trump and his campaign, uh, and, and that, quite frankly, the election was stolen from him. Donald Trump telegraphed this back in August when he indicated that, you know, if I lose, it has to be rigged because we know everybody in the country is voting for me. Well, duh, they're not. And the reality of it is, they now are having to give cover and license to this. Um, you've got, you know, election officials. You've got, uh, you know, people inside the political apparatus who feel threatened by the very process that we're going through because they don't know, Ari, how someone's going to interpret Donald Trump's crazy rantings. They're just not sure whether or not a mob is going to show up at their home as they have in some cases and what that turns into. So, you know, what Trump is trying to do is to create a suppressive chilling effect on the process because he's not getting his way. And he wants to dumb it down and gum it up and create perceptions and in some cases realities around potential violence that folks just go, okay, okay, you win, we, we back away from it. But our republic is stronger than Donald Trump. And on January 20th, Joe Biden will be, I repeat, will be the next president of the United States. And he will be certified as such by the Electoral College next Monday, Mr. Trump. Hmm. Michelle? You know, I'd like to think that some of these Republicans are going along with Trump's, you know, seditious attempt to, I mean, even a you know, failed and farcical coup attempt is still a coup attempt. And that is what Donald Trump is trying to do. He was trying to illegally stay in power. He is asking members of state legislatures, some of whom are ready to go along, not enough, thank God, to overturn the will of their state's electors. And I would like to think that more Republicans aren't speaking out against him because they're afraid, but I think it's entirely possible that there are plenty of Republicans who have lost faith in democracy, who are not interested in a democracy that is that a true democracy would consign Republicans to a permanent minority party. Um, Democrats at this point have won seven out of the last eight elections in the popular vote. The Republicans are a minority party and they can only enforce, they can only be in power through increasing minority rule, through disenfranchising the majority of the country. If you, if they had to face the majority of the country, they would be afraid to go along with asking the Supreme Court to throw out all of the votes in states like Georgia and Pennsylvania, but they're not. And so this is a symptom of a much bigger crisis of democracy in America that frankly is not going to be over when Donald Trump finally leaves on January 20th. Yeah, I think you both are speaking uh, soberly and clearly about it, particularly why what has been fomented and arguably normalized for part of the country uh, then becomes a new baseline. Uh, we want to add to that with some reporting. Both our panelists stay. But if you look at what Fox News, which used to be sort of the right edge of this, and Newsmax are doing, the Washington Post reports, quote, surreality is being presented as a valid alternative contrast to the reality, which echoes Donald Trump. We're getting warmer. These lawsuits are coming together. There are a lot of fake news headlines out there right now. The lawsuit from Texas is a very serious legal challenge at the very least. It has a right to be heard. It was a rigged election. Uh, you look at the different states, the election was totally rigged. Michael, something that, that I've reminded folks over these past few years is Donald Trump attacks the free and independent press so much because it matters not because it's just some side commentary. Uh, and particularly, although we have a digital revolution going on that's, that's pretty interesting, 
particularly what's beamed into people's homes on TV, at least for some amount of time longer, uh, matters. It certainly mattered to Donald Trump. Uh, what do you think about the factual side of this? I'm not talking about whether people on Fox News want to give very conservative right. views, which they absolutely should do, whatever they think. I'm talking about what I just showed, which is on uh, the right-wing alternatives to Fox, giving people false information and a misunderstanding of what happened in the race so that some of these people, and this is a subtle point, some people, not the ones advocating violence, but some others may have the mistaken belief that they are the ones having the election stole from them and what that does uh, to civil society, Michael. Yeah, you know, Ari, you, you, you touch on a number of, of very gnarly points there because um, in many respects, we have to we have to unpack this differently. Uh, we really have to almost sort of step back from it and and sort of go. So why would why uh, the network stuff aside for a moment? But why would a U.S. senator or a congressman or a state legislator? What is it they're getting out of this? What has triggered in their thinking and their understanding? People of reason, people who have access to facts. People who have, you know, access to reports from the New York Times and the Washington Post, as well as a lot of other media outlets, still conclude that this election was rigged. I mean, it, 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 it goes beyond some fascination with Donald Trump. It goes beyond, you know, oh, geez, I want to get a nice tweet from the guy. There's got to be something else underneath this, which we haven't quite put our finger on. You're absolutely right in your opening point that Trump knows this and has systematically abused it to get his way, uh, to prick at wounds and scabs, but to also create new ones that the press has been spending a lot of time trying to follow the story when, in fact, they were the story, when, in fact, what Toronto Donald Trump was doing was a very different story from what they were following. So uh, I think when this is when we get past this year, because 2020 has been a bear. <laughs> I'll be polite because it's six o'clock. It's been a bear. It we're not we're not doing late night Michael yet. Um, but it, it, it's it's been but it is something I think it's going to require all of us to sort of step back and go, Senator, tell me exactly what it was you were thinking when you saw children in cages and you said nothing. And what were you thinking when you when you heard the president say that, oh, yeah, I won in the battleground states. And you're looking as a senator from a battleground state at the numbers and the voters in your state who voted, and you said right. nothing. Right. And I'm running over on time. I want to get Michelle in, though, to say, can you speak to us in closing about the difference here between exhaustion, which Michael alluded to and people may understandably feel, and they said, well, I went out and voted or I did what I got to do. Uh, and vigilance, um, which is always a part of the uh, of the Democratic project. Well, and I think that the, you have Democratic elites who don't want people to panic, right? They don't want to make it seem as if what Donald Trump is proposing is a live option. And so the strategy has been to sort of laugh at Donald Trump. And that might work up to a point, but I think there needs to be much stronger pushback, including possible disbarment for some of the lawyers bringing these cases that are full of blatant untruths, right? This is even a failed and ridiculous attack on our democracy is still an attack on our democracy. And I think what you're seeing is that a, a right wing that has created an alternative reality for people to live in for many, many years. I mean, I wrote a book about this in 2006, is now realizing that they can't control it anymore, right? That their, Franken their Frankenstein no. monster uh, um, is, is, is no longer under their authority. Yeah, I think that's very well put. And if if quote unquote voter fraud, which is rare, is the crime of a single illicit vote, how does America after January 20th want to have a reckoning for those who stood up on the record and tried to steal right. hundreds of thousands of votes? Uh, that's a question that doesn't just automatically answer itself. Uh, Michael and Michelle, thanks to both of you. Run